In this video, I want to continue to talk about how we go about estimating partial effects in nonlinear discrete choice models. So the example which I'm going to be talking about here is, let's say we're interested in the probability that a given country undergoes a civil war over, let's say, the last five years, or went to civil un under went to civil war over the last five years. So we're looking at the probability that civil war, which is a dummy variable, is equal to one, given that we have whether or not that country was landlocked, so whether or not that country had any sort of access to the sea, and also the level of GDP for that particular country. And we're going to assume that we're using some sort of nonlinear transformation. So this could be a logit, it could be a probit model of a linear combination of the independent variables. So we have alpha plus beta one times whether that country was landlocked plus beta two times the GDP of that particular country. And I should put I's here because I've put an I on the left hand side. Okay, so let's say we were interested in evaluating the partial effect of GDP. How do we go about doing that? Well, because we're only interested in the partial effect of GDP holding all other variables constant, that means that we're gonna take the partial derivative of the probability with respect to GDP in this particular circumstance. And if we do that, we are gonna get beta two times small f of alpha plus beta one times whether the country was landlocked. So landlocked here is obviously a dummy variable plus beta two times the GDP of that country. And just so I'm being absolutely clear here, little f means the first differential of big F. Okay, so we've got a formula which expresses the partial effect of GDP, but it depends on both whether the country was landlocked and also the level of GDP. And if we had further explanatory variables here, it would also depend on all of those. So there's not one answer to what is the partial effect of GDP on the probability. So if we are asked just for one answer, how could we go ahead and proceed? Well, one solution is to take each of these variables at their average. And when you do that, essentially you're calculating the partial effect when all variables are, there, are at their averages, obviously. Obviously, this is a sort of one giving one value when in fact there are a range of values, but sometimes that's better than nothing. So sometimes if you just evaluate each of these different variables at their averages, and then you evaluate the partial effect, that is a nice way of gaining some insight into the effect of one particular variable on the probability of something occurring. 